In this video, I'm going to be answering a series of questions that on a lot of skeptical websites are called ghost stumpers. Why are they called that? Well, the reason is a lot of ghost hunters, paranormal investigators, when these questions are asked of them, they don't know how to respond. They get stumped. Well, I'm going to show you how to correctly answer them. So let's do this. Ghost stumper question number one. Why do ghosts wear clothes? If ghosts are human souls, why do they appear clothed and with inanimate objects like hats and canes? Okay, good question. Why would they appear that way? Well, they're hallucinations, specifically veridical hallucinations. See, if you've done your history, you've done your research here, you would know that answer immediately. This leads us to question number two. Why do ghost trains, cars, and carriages exist when they have no life energy? Again, they are hallucinations. Now, I'm going to go off on the believer side of this here. Um, but let's suppose in, in the example of a ghost train. Who's saying that if this is actually some sort of remnant of consciousness that survived, and it has this ability to project itself inside of somebody's head, why would it choose a human form? Maybe it's showing the train to show how he died, or maybe he was an engineer and that's something that he loved. Um, there's all kinds of possibilities when you add this hallucination uh, explanation. Um, one that they do not mention, which is kind of important, is sometimes witnesses report the entire environment changing. Uh, in fact, one of the earliest ghost stories coming from the Stanley Hotel is talking about a housekeeper who is going into the ballroom and the entire ballroom has changed. She's seeing multiple people in uh, early 1900s dress, the bar is in a different location, the pictures are different, uh, the entire environment changed. Again, hallucination. How about the third question? This is where it's going to get interesting. How can a, limb, a limbless, immaterial spirit move objects, slam doors, or make footstep sounds? Okay. The only way you can answer this on a uh, believer end is to bring up parapsychology. It can only be done through telekinesis. The problem is telekinesis hasn't yet been proven to be 100% existing. You know, it, there's a lot of doubt. And you can't use the paranormal to prove something else that's paranormal. So another answer would be, I don't know. There's no information on that. A lot of the early psychical researchers did not include this in their studies because they were so wrapped up in the hallucination thing. Well, it's a hallucination, something physically can't move. So they simply didn't study it, so there's no data for that. Edit. Still editing. Our next ghost stumper question. Why don't paranormal groups collaborate and show that they can get the same evidence independently and blinded on multiple occasions? Well, there's four reasons why this can't happen. Number one, they really don't have any evidence. Uh, they're looking in the wrong place or at the wrong thing. Um, a lot of what modern ghost hunting is tailored off of is TV shows, a shitload of really bad books, which you can find in the New Age section of the bookstore, folklore, superstition, Hollywood. Um, they're not looking what they should be looking for. Secondly, groups can seldom collaborate due to different belief systems and general ignorance of knowledge, methods, and instrumentation. Then they're predominantly people that are hobbyists. Um, it, that different belief systems presents a, a unique problem because the methodology isn't going to be the same. And group A can't get along with group B because they believe two different things. And that's stopping a lot of the forward progress. Uh, next, professional researchers have conducted studies in veridical hallucinations that have come up with identical results. 
And what's interesting when you start looking at the different studies, in fact, I'll put them down in the comments in case you want to check them out further. They're coming up with the same results from one decade to the next, to the next, to the next. They're staying consistent. And finally, in the big problem, the phenomenon, had, the phenomenon that we're looking at here has too many confounding variables. Currently, it cannot be tested by science. And that's the big kick in the pants. Next ghost number question. Why are there no ghosts of ancient man? Why isn't the world overrun with ghosts considering all the people in the world who have died? Well, number one, the loss of thermodynamics. If you understand all of those, time eventually wins. Nothing is eternal. Secondly, studies, especially those of the census of hallucinations, have already shown that the farther that one gets from the person's time of death, the less frequency uh, it is that that person's apparition is going to appear. So, there's that one. Edit. Alright, our next ghost number question. Humans can detect quantum particles with extremely sensitive instrumentation. Why can't we yet detect ghosts? Well, the answer to that is vertical hallucinations are still a mystery. No one knows how or what they are or how they occur. Um, also, there's not really a means to scientifically test that. Um, you have to look at it from a, a different perspective. When we're talking about vertical hallucinations, we don't know, is it a ghost, some entity causing this, the person to experience this, uh, what people are calling an intelligent haunt, or is it something in the environment that's causing them to hallucinate and have that, such as the residual haunt, or is it just the product of a disordered brain? Is it a fossil hallucination? And that's what we're looking at, you know, some kind of psychosis. It's still wrapped up, we still don't know. And finally, last question. If a place is really, really haunted, why haven't scientists been able to set up shop there and finally capture genuine paranormal phenomenon? Number one, there is nothing physical to capture. If you go back through the history of ghost hunting, people have tried this over and over and over. We could talk about uh, Tony Wells from ASSAP. Uh, his system was called the Environmental Monitoring Unit, EMU. Used it in the field, monitoring all kinds of crap. Didn't result in anything tangible. Uh, we talk about Tony Cornell, another psychical researcher. His system was called SPIDER. And it was something they set up for months on end, trying to capture all kinds of relevant pieces of data. It didn't turn up anything interesting. There's nothing physical there to capture. It's happening inside the head of the people experiencing it. That's your next situation. People aren't really studying the phenomenon as far as the human experience portion of it. They're looking for something in the environment, not necessarily what's going on up in here anymore. That research has stopped a long time ago. Finally, again, there's confounding variables. You have myth building. This could just be a ghost story. Uh, this is what humans do. We're storytellers. We write books. We make movies. We make music. Um, unfortunately, most of these haunted places, that's what they are. The big challenge is trying to differentiate. Is this something really tangible? Or are we just chasing another ghost story? You have hoaxes, which are very common. Um, also, the nature of the phenomenon itself is extremely unpredictable. How can you be in the right place at the right time with your equipment and actually detect something, even if there's anything there to actually detect? Um, comparisons between descriptions of apparitions between witnesses might contain vertical information that might point to something. However, that information is considered to be anecdotal, which basically is not going to be good enough as far as the burden of proof goes. So there's still a lot of stuff out there um, that is problematic. So that's how you answer those ghost number questions. By the way, if you have any questions about anything I've talked about, please put it down in the comments of the video and I will try to get back to you and give you an answer on them. Also, is there any other subjects you would like for me to talk about? Put them down there as well and I'll see if I'll make a video on them. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.